All right, so I thought I'd explain static friction to you for this video. So I'm assuming that you've already um, looked at the video on kinetic friction or you already know about kinetic friction. So um, kinetic friction was whenever you have, you use kinetic friction when there is motion between the two surfaces involved. So the two surfaces back to this little prop here. The two surfaces, if they're moving relative to one another, then you use kinetic friction. But if they're stationary, and this is moving, it can be moving, but if it's stationary, or like you're trying to push on it, and it's not moving, that's static friction, which is a little bit more, uh, a little bit trickier. So let's take a look. So, um, so static friction is when there's no movement. Remember that this was our equation for kinetic friction. It was um, the kinetic friction is equal to mu k, the kinetic coefficient of friction, um, times the normal force. Well, um, this is going to be the equation then for static friction. Uh, you can look at this equation in two ways. This is usually the way you see it done. And that is that the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. Um, another way of um, teaching this, though, is that the force of static friction maximum, the max it can be, is equal to mu s times the normal force. So this looks a lot like the um, original, the, the previous equation that we did for, for kinetic friction. Okay, so um, let me explain. Use, I'm going to use a, a, an example problem that is really good at um, explaining the nuances of static friction. Okay, so it's a, it's a longer problem, but I'm going to use it as a, I'm just going to do this entire problem, but let me read you this problem, and then we'll solve it. Okay, this, so we have a crate of oranges here, and it says a crate of oranges with a mass of 3 kilograms rests on a horizontal floor. The coefficient of static friction between the crate and the floor is 0.4 and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. So we know both the kinetic and coef the, the coefficient of kinetic and static friction. So um, I'm going to do this in parts. So the first part is going to say what is the minimum horizontal force, what minimum horizontal force must a person apply to start the crate in motion? Okay. So um, back to this book. I, and I don't have a crate of oranges, so I'll use this book again. So this book is um, if I push, if I push a little, it doesn't move. If I push a little more, it doesn't move. You can't tell this, but I'm pushing a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more, and then all of a sudden it starts to move, okay? So this question is asking, what is the what is the minimum force I have to push in order for this to start to move, okay? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, first calculate what the maximum force of static friction is. So the maximum force of static friction is going to be, um, let's see, F S max is equal to the static friction coefficient times the normal force. Now the normal force in this case, let's see if this is three kilograms, the orange, the crate of oranges, the box of oranges is three kilograms, then that means that um, there's going to be a force down here of um, 30 newtons. I'm using 10 meters per second squared for G instead of 9.8 meters per second squared for, for a little G. So that, that's the force of gravity, mg. Uh, and then um, the force, uh, the normal force, must be equal to 30 newtons too because it's not moving up or down. Normal force, uh, just a, just an aside here. Normal force is not always equal to the force of gravity. There's many times when the normal force is not, and you want to use the normal force, not the force of gravity. It just they just happen to be equal in magnitude here. Okay, so um, just calculating what the maximum force is then. The maximum force of static friction is going to be, we were told that the mu s is 0.4, so I'm going to put in 0.4. That's the coefficient of static friction times the normal force, 30 newtons. So that's going to be about 12 newtons 
8.4 times 30 is about 12 newtons. Okay, that's the maximum force that the force of friction can uh, put on there. Now let me explain conceptually what's going on there. What's, what's happening when you do reach 12 newtons of force? Okay, so if you remember this little gizmo here, if this is the crate of oranges, this is a microscopic view of the surface of the crate of oranges and a microscopic view of the floor that it's on. When, when you engage, when these are engaged, they can't, they get snagged, like this surface gets snagged on that surface, and so it can't, it can't move. But if you keep putting a force, there'll be a point where these, where these uh, peaks and valleys, either on the crate or the, or the floor, where those peaks and valleys are going to start to crumble, they're going to, they're brittle, and they're going to start to crumble, and at that point, when they start to break, that's when this thing is going to start to move. And so the maximum force they can do that at before they start to break is 12 newtons. That's what that's saying. Okay, so taking a look at that then. So that's 12 newtons of force that can be applied. Now, so what is the minimum horizontal force the person must apply to start the crate moving? 12 newtons, because if you put in 12, if you go a little over 12 newtons, it's going to start to move. Okay, our next question in here is um, if no horizontal force is applied to the crate and the crate is at rest, how large is the frictional force exerted on the crate? Okay, so we're not applying a horizontal force and the crate's at rest, the crate of oranges, what will be the frictional force? Okay, now you might think it's going to be 12 newtons because we didn't, we just calculated it's 12 newtons. But actually, if this is our crate of Newtons again, and it's just sitting there, then, um, and I'm not pushing this way or this way, it's just sitting on this table, then um, there shouldn't be a force of friction. If there were, let's say you said there was a force friction and it was that way. Well, that means that if I put this crate down on the table, and you said, and you argued that there was a force friction that way, it should skid it should accelerate that way. And so, and so it doesn't. So the force of friction is um, gonna be gonna work like this. If I if this is my crate of oranges and I push with one new if I don't push, there's no force friction. If I push with one newton, then there'll be one newton of friction on pushing it that way. If I push with two newtons, there'll be two newtons pushing that way. If I push with three newtons, then there'll be three newtons pushing that way. And that will keep on matching me, newton, newton for newton, the force friction will keep matching me until at 12 newtons, at 12 newtons, that's when if I go a little bit more, it's going to start to, it's going to start to go. Uh, some books will put it like this. This is a way of saying what I was just uh, illustrating what I was just trying to say here. So if this is the force of friction, whether it's the st static or kinetic friction, it's just a force of friction right now, and we apply a force to an object, a horizontal force to an object, then what happens is um, if, I, when I, if I don't apply a force, if it's my force applied is zero, then the friction force will be zero. And as I apply more force, the frictional force matches me, matches me, matches me, matches me. But at some maximum, FS maximum, then it will start to, all those peaks and valleys will start to crumble. And then it's going to um, start to slide. And so the, the force of friction will then go to a constant uh, kinetic force of friction. This is idealized. This is just a, a simplified model, as I said in the previous video, that, that, that it's actually more complex than this, but this is an approximation to how that works. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. So if no horizontal force is applied, to the crate and the crate is at rest, how large is the frictional force? It will be zero newtons. Okay, what is the magnitude of the frictional force if a person applies a horizontal force of seven newtons to the crate and the crate is initially at rest? So if we apply seven newtons, coming back to our problem here, if you apply seven newtons, 
say to the right, this way, 7 newtons. Well, the crate's not going to move because you, you, haven't bust, you haven't started to bust those peaks and valleys. And so it's going to apply 7 newtons back. It's going to match you, newton for newton. So that's going to be the force. There's nothing really to calculate. It's just you're using your reasoning for saying that it's 7 newtons. Okay, letter D. What is the minimum horizontal for what minimum horizontal force must a person apply to keep the crate moving at a constant velocity once it's been started? Oh, okay, so now we want to push it and have it go at a constant velocity. Well, that means a constant velocity means the acceleration is zero. So um, but if it's moving at a constant velocity, then my frictional force is no longer the static friction, it's the kinetic friction. So let's calculate the kinetic force of friction. The kinetic force of friction, F sub K, is going to be equal to mu S, or mu K, time, times the normal force. So the kinetic force of friction is going to be uh, mu K, i got to use the point 2 now, times the normal force. Now the normal force is 30 newtons still. So when I do that math, that turns into about 6 newtons of kinetic force. Okay, so um, if, you want, if you want this crate to go at a constant speed then, let's see, there'll be 30 newtons down due to gravity, the, the pull of the earth on the crate, and then there'll be 30 newtons up from the table or from the floor pushing on the crate. And then if you, if, uh, if the force friction, let's say you're pushing it that way, so the force friction can be 6 newtons if it's sliding along. So, and if you wanted to go at a constant speed, you better push at 6 newtons, because then by pushing at 6 newtons, the, see how the net force will be zero? So you'll have, the acceleration will be zero, and your V will be constant. Okay, we just have one more question here, and that is, the question is, uh, I don't know if you can see that. So if a person applies a continuous horizontal force of 18 newtons, what will be the acceleration of the crate? Okay, so the continuous force of 18 newtons, so we're going to go back to this, uh, this problem, and so what's going to happen when you do that, your free body diagram is going to look like this. You'll have um, 30 newtons down from the earth pulling down, gravity, and then you'll have 30 newtons from the floor pushing up, and the person's pushing with 18 newtons, not drawing these vectors to scale, because that shouldn't be the same size as that, um, and then you'll have 6 newtons this way. Because the force of kinetic friction is just your standard, it's, it's always equal to mu k times the normal force. Alright, so to get the acceleration, I just say A equals F net over M. And so A equals F net. Now, um, the 30 newtons will both cancel. And so um, when I do the math here, it's going to be 18 minus 6, that's 12 newtons divided by the mass, which is 3 kilograms. So that's going to be going, it's going to be accelerating at 4 meters per second squared. Okay, so let me put this problem up one more time in case you want to see how that problem, what numbers they were. So it was just that. And we just solved that problem. And what I like about this problem is that it, it really illustrates the difference between static friction and kinetic friction. All right, thanks.